Okay, so Ken Holland just had his pre-draft press conference, kind of going into detail of what the next little bit of the Edmonton Oilers schedule looks like. And he said a couple of things that really stuck out. One in particular where he said, we're in win-now mode. You know, those are decisions that we've made. You know, we've traded picks. We're we're in the win-now mode. He was asked a question about, um, you know, certain teams making some noise around the draft this year, especially about wanting to move up into the top 10. And he generally doesn't comment on other teams, so he reflected the answer and flipped it back. Well, I don't want to pick in the top 10. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've done that before. It's I'd rather I'd rather not have a first round pick. You know, I think we've got a good team. Edmonton has around five million bucks to play with for the off season, but they also have about five players that I think they would like to have back on the team. Now, he said he's working on negotiations with Evan Bouchard, he needs a raise, and that he's filed a qualifying offer for Ryan McLeod, he also needs a raise. Matisse Yanmark and the Oilers have a mutual interest in coming back. I feel like he'll probably come back at around the same cap hit, something that's variable or something that'd be in the Derek Ryan range, or it's a two-year sub a million bucks. Clem Costin is one that is a little bit upsetting to hear. He does have some KHL opportunities and some negotiations issues might conflict with a career in the NHL. So Edmonton can either trade his rights before Friday or they can qualify him. And if he goes back to the KHL, they'll at least maintain his rights. Or if they can come to an agreement in a number that kind of works for both the Oilers and for Klim, that'll work too. Now, Klim has had one really good year here in Edmonton. It's a very small sample size. And with how tight cap space is and how tough it is to move money, I understand Ken's sort of hesitation on wanting to dish out maybe two-ish million bucks on this player, who's really only played about 60 games this season in Oilers colors. So we'll have to wait and see what happens with him over the next few days. He was asked about Philip Broberg, and he kind of hinted towards a couple of things. Now, he did say for Evan Bouchard around this point in his career, when they're playing in the bubble, he only played about 11 games before, you know, finding an opportunity in the lineup, contributing more, finding a path where we can develop him and he can kind of slot into an NHL lineup. And with Broberg, it's also a little tight because of how many defensemen are on the team. Uh, He kind of alluded to, but not really, that there might be a market for Broberg if there isn't a spot or an opportunity on the team, whether somebody moves out for cap space relief or, you know, there's an upgrade to be made or whatever, or he he stays you know that's also an option as well he's a good defenseman he'll become a good defenseman perhaps he might not just be in the window right now i mean you saw today alex newhook going to the montreal canadians colorado getting some assets back that they'll probably flip to help strengthen out that second line in that middle six all without selling out from their defense which is kind of what everybody thought they would do because they're so strong in that position So there might be an opportunity for some kind of movement there if Kenny wants to spice things up a little bit. When asked about Yamamoto and a potential buyout, you know, he didn't say his name specifically, but if there was a buyout, they they would be exploring those options, and Yamamoto is just the most likely candidate. He's under 26. The buyout will be one-third the cap hit. It's like 500 grand this year and next. It gets him around 2.5 million bucks in cap relief. So, you know, there's some options to explore, but... Kenny was saying that he's going into the last year of his contract. He's energized, he's juiced up, he's ready to go, he's roaring to go, and he's excited. It's win now mode. His job isn't going to change from when he got hired. He wants to win. He wants to build a winning championship team here in Edmonton, and I believe him. I have faith in him. Pretty much every year since he's been here, he's made some kind of significant impact to this team, whether it was James Neal, the first trade he ever did, moving out the immovable contract to signing Evander Kane and then extending him, bringing in Brett Kulak, bringing in Duncan Keith, bringing in Zach Hyman. He's been able to bring in and acquire talent from outside of the organization, and he's done a pretty good job. I mean, the team was just explosive last year, and they're just going to want it that much more. So I do have faith in the team. I do have faith that we'll strengthen a couple areas. Obviously, we would like goaltending to be better. We would like defense to be a little bit better, and I think we would like to shore up a top six right winger and kind of restructure the bottom six so sounds like a lot on the agenda but for ken holland to have faith in this team after seeing what they've done in the last two years i mean he's right vegas has made it to the dance four out of their six years and it took until now that they were able to kind of crack their way through and take it all home edmonton just has to keep repeating the process they got to keep getting back in there and he's going to do his part to help build a very deep team And that's kind of the path that we're on already. So much of this team is locked up for a while. So we'll be contending for a good long time. All in all, I'm excited for this offseason, even if it's not as splashy and as loud as years past. 
at least Edmonton is in a position and Kenny's trying to put them in a position where they can accrue some cap space and maybe make a mid-season acquisition, maybe do some more noise at the trade deadline. Anyways, that's it for me. Draft day is tomorrow. We'll see what kind of shenanigans happens then. Even today, there was just a flurry of trades and transactions and signings, and it doesn't seem like it's going to slow down. There's been some exciting stuff going on. Market opens on Saturday. There's a lot, a lot of exciting stuff to talk about over the next little bit. I'll keep you guys posted. I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.